Where in the political spectrum does fascism belong, the left or the right? It seems like a straightforward question, right? Just a quick Wikipedia search should clear things up. And boom, fascism is a far right, authoritarian blah blah. So there you go, answer solved, right? Well, not really. There are people who argue that fascism belongs to the left. What I'm trying to get at is the fascist ideology is one that is distinctly on the left. He sounds like he ate the mic. But anyways, where does fascism really belong then? Well, maybe looking at its origin could help us answer this question. Picture this, you're a handsome looking Italian lad or lady enjoying your life when a crazy man rambling about philosophy tries to talk to you. That man is Giovanni Gentile, an avid socialist who finds himself at odds with Marx. Now, Marx argued that historical oppression had divided the society into different classes, with the bourgeois overworking the proletariat to death. So he predicted, and kinda hoped for, the working class to rise up and overthrow the capitalists. But Gentile holds a different perspective. To him, the true greatness of a state lies in the diversity of its people. He sees each group of people, or as he refers to them, corporations, playing a unique and valuable role in contributing to the greater good of the nation. This captivating perspective catalyzed the creation of corporatism, a captivating chorus where colorful corporations coalesced within the state. In other words, Gentile cherishes the differences in ideas among different peoples and advocates for the state to act as an ethical umpire, negotiating between these corporations. Now, listening to this man rambling on, fascism kinda sounds like a nice idea. Let me elaborate. Gentile envisioned fascism as a peaceful and achievable branch of socialism. Instead of a violent overthrow of the capitalist class like in the Soviet Union, it emphasized cooperation among people for the greater good. No fighting. No fighting. No fighting. No fighting! And if Gentile's theories held true, it meant that the state could not oppress its people because ultimately the state was the people. So let's take a look at the socialist aspect of fascism to confirm Gentile's beliefs. Before I continue, a quick disclaimer. I will only look at two major examples of fascism, Nazi Germany and fascist Italy. This was to save time and narrow my field of research and was not cherry-picked to prove my arbitrary points. With that out of the way, back to the topic. Fascism is a totalitarian ideology. What that means is that the state exercises total control over all aspects of life, such as social values, morality, culture, and importantly for this video, the economy. For figures like Mussolini and Gentile, capitalism was deemed inherently evil as it represented a selfish ideology, where some heartless individuals profited from the toil and suffering of the working class. Capitalism, in their eyes, was both historically and structurally abhorrent. It was capitalism. It was always capitalism. Actually, it was the Jews. Shut up! Just shut up! Honestly, I don't freaking know what Hitler was talking about half the time, but whatever. Important thing is that he shared the discontent towards capitalism as well. This is evidenced by the fact that the economy was often shifted to focus on national policies. In Nazi Germany, they nationalized industries that were necessary for their master plan, World War II. Armaments, refineries, steel mills, and other war-related industries were nationalized to serve Germany's ambitions. Similarly, this also applied to Mussolini's Italy. According to the doctrine of fascism, lazy fair capitalism or the let capitalists do whatever the fact they want capitalism resulted in economic crises during the 19th century. It was the state's duty to stabilize and prevent these economic disasters, maintaining a balance between the capitalist and worker corporations. That's why Italy embarked on a path of nationalizing a significant portion of its economy, specifically heavy industries. So there you go, fascism is a socialist ideology. All done and it's time for the video to slowly fade into black with my voice slowly becoming quieter. But we know that's not the answer. Socialism is not when the government does stuff. A fundamental tenet of socialism is that the workers control the means of production, and they can do so through the state or trade unions or other various means. However, if the people have no control over the state, which was the case in Germany and Italy, then that is not socialism, it's authoritarianism. 
For this reason, fascism is often described as a third-way ideology, that is, it opposes both the right and the left. For Germany, Marxist socialism was considered a Judeo-Bolshevism, in which the Jews were secretly working to entice the uneducated working class to their will. There was no difference between capitalism and socialism, they were all a Jewish plot. For Italy, socialism was considered a failed and flawed branch. Mussolini states, fascism is therefore opposed to socialism to which unity within the state is unknown. In other words, Marxian socialism divided people rather than uniting them. To simplify for the fascists, socialism was not the true version of socialism. Fascism was the new anti-socialist socialist ideology. So, if it's neither of the left nor the right, why is fascism considered a far-right ideology? I could see one major reason why we consider fascism a far-right ideology. That is because when people think of the right and left, they don't only think of economics, it also involves social aspects. Modern-day leftists are often associated with being internationalist and progressive, while rightists are considered to be nationalistic and conservative. Because fascism aligns with rightist social cultural beliefs and is extreme in its nature, it is considered far-right. Again, it's not exactly correct, but it's not entirely wrong either. I mean, you don't hear neo-Nazis complaining about capitalism ruining the lives of the working class. You mostly hear them scream, You keep driving, you black spear chucker piece of sh I must admit, I found some aspects of fascism appealing and still hold that thought. However, the reality of fascism unfolded quite differently. The principles that promised a partnership between the workers and capitalists were betrayed in favor of serving the national interests rather than the people's. Workers faced even tougher circumstances under fascism. Although there were worker corporations, their leaders were appointed by the fascists rather than elected by the workers. The socialists who called for greater power for the proletariat were persecuted for treachery to the state. Similarly, fascism intended to unite different groups of people but only for those within the state. To fascism, state meant a shared consciousness, shared history, shared culture, shared society and more. If you weren't part of the state, in other words if you held different ideas to the state, then you were an enemy to the state. Lastly, the notion that the government couldn't be oppressive to the people was just plainly incorrect. Once in power, it seeks to maintain and expand its authority. The secret police, voter suppression, persecution of non-conformists, and other terrible methods being the example. Gentile wrote the theories of fascism with the hope that they would lead to a better world. And frankly, they did convince quite a lot of people too. So when we perceive fascism as a comically evil ideology, one that is unmistakably villainous, it falsely leads us to believe that we could easily recognize it. Yet fascism, like all the other terrible ideologies, is not that obvious. If we do not understand how tempting it could be and how similar it is to the other so-called good ideologies, then we may have another version of fascism without even realizing it. Hitler was not outside humanity, but within it. And once he is dead, he will occupy us without striking a blow if we do not admit that he is a part of us, the devil's part in our hearts. Fascism is not some inexplicable disease of another world, another century. It is of our century, a part of our history.